All right, guys, so the approach to airbrushing, I said I would go through this um, before I get to thinning the paints. What does that mean? Well, you really need to understand that airbrushing will only get you maybe about 25% of the way to complete, okay? It may do the lion's share of work, but when you really complete with airbrushing, you still have quite a bit to go. Have you guys ever noticed when you're painting it, you, you, you got a model out, you've done the base coat, you've done the, you know, this, that, and the other thing, and so on and so forth. You can be like 80% the way done, and you'll look at your model and go, God, that still doesn't look like anything's, you know, accomplished on it. It's at last like 10 and 25%, somewhere in there where everything comes together all of a sudden and actually starts to look good. Um, airbrushing doesn't get you that far. So when you get done airbrushing, unless it's a specific thing that you're doing, you're going to look at it, you're going to go, ah, that didn't do anything, but it does. You need to have an approach to painting. The approach is, for instance, we look at this little orc guy, uh, it's probably a right, bad example. Anyway, that's an orc, it's black, it's primer black. So you airbrush, you're going to start, because remember, airbrush is indiscriminate, okay? So you need to be able to think about what is the area that I'm going to do that it's okay if I get that color paint everywhere else. Um, you know, when you do your first coat, whatever it may be, how you can be nice and messy, it's the funnest part. Because it doesn't matter if you spill over on everything else, because you're going to paint over that. Airbrushing is the same way, at least for the basics, okay? So you have to think, for this little guy right here, what is the base color I'm going to use, and am I going to do anything with it to actually uh, get it to look the way that I want because I don't want to spray paint say green which goes on the head and the arms and stuff and then I have to do the cloth but again the you know the face is just green that I really need to do airbrushing I want to kind of shoot my my bullet off on the green is that could I could I've done that with the brush what does an airbrush do for you that's really the question Really, the thing is, it gives you a nice, smooth coat and allows you to do color gradations or fade from one color to another color with a very subtle transition, okay? Those are the big things that it does for you. So if that's what you need on a particular model, that's what you need to do. It also makes fantastic highlights. Um, that's what you need to do. If you're working around some stuff that doesn't have any gradation in it, Okay, so like his arm, that doesn't really have any gradation, doesn't have any real highlighting to it, and its curve is not flat, just do that with the brush, guys. Don't, you know, save your time. Um, but if you're doing other things, we'll go back to the guy we're going to do. So in this case, if we are going to paint this guy, what we're going to do with this guy, okay, is we're going to do a little bit of a experiment here on making some different colors. Um, this right here is a little palette that I did for a customer. What we're going to do is you see the different colors, right? You got blue, purple, and green. Okay, we're going to do this little cold one in green. We're going to have a gradation starting from black, going up through a, a green, and going up to a light, the light green. Okay, and then we're going to have the scales red, um, with some. Uh, some dark red with, with some kind of detail around where the scales and, and the skin meet. Okay, so the main part I am here is I'm using the airbrush to get this transition from black up to green. Okay, you really can't do this with a brush unless you want to take a lot of time. There are no flat surfaces in here. If you have flat surfaces, particularly for you guys who do a lot of 40k, you do uh, you know, vehicles and stuff like that, the airbrush is going to do really good because it's really difficult to play paint large flat surfaces with a brush. Everybody knows it. I don't care what you say, who you are. If it's a big flat surface, use a friggin' airbrush or a spray can. If you don't have one and you're going to be painting a lot of miniatures, you could always send them to me and I will do a commission for you. Um, uh, but seriously, then if you're doing a lot of 40k projects or vehicles, you may really want to think about investing in, a, in an airbrush. Anyway, so I have a need because what I want to do on this guy is I want the bottom part where he is, or depending on where, it, where it's at, okay, to transition from one color to another. So you have to start thinking about, hmm, how is this model going to look? Okay, if the scales are going to be red, okay, I'm going to paint them red, like scarlet color, that means the body is going to be green. Now, 
as it is with uh, most lizards, the stomach is actually the lightest part, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go backwards is we're going to paint the stomach from the bottom, the light color this way, and then have a transition up to the dark color as it goes to the top. And that means the top here, all the little cracks and stuff in the scales are all going to be basically um, black, very dark, and then when I paint over red, they'll have a very nice contrast to it. So you have to kind of think about your approach. Um, you know, I could do a lot of different things with this, but that's the approach I want to take. And again, it's very important when you're, when you're getting ready to airbrush, what do I need the airbrush for and do I really need it? You may find you have a lot of projects where you don't need it. Uh, so like this shielder right here, for instance. Yes, I could take this little shield. I could primer it with, um, with the airbrush. And then I could start airbrushing it with the airbrush. But really, why? Look how small it is. I mean, it's smaller than my thumbnail. Just use a friggin' brush on it. You're going to save yourself a lot of time. Um, and you get just as good of a job. Remember, airbrush is good. It's going to do you the most good when you're doing things where you want to make shadows or you want to do color transitions. That's where it really, really shines. And on flat surfaces. So the three things where it really shines. If you're not facing any one of those instances, you may want to pick out your brush. And guys, just practicing with your airbrush, and not just with your airbrush, but practicing the art of miniature painting and when and when not to use an airbrush is really where it's at. It's a tool. This right here is a tool, just like my dry brush, right? Just like my little uh, double zero, okay? It's a tool that I use to get the effect that I want. I don't rely on this 100%, but I know if I need to do a certain effect, that's the tool to go for, okay? If I need to do a dry brushing effect, I'm not going to use this, right? I'm not going to use my airbrush. I'm going to use my dry brush to do a dry brushing effect. Same thing. Don't force it, okay? This is a, a, a round peg, so to speak, and there are a lot of uses for a round peg, but don't force it into a square hole because you, it, it's just not going to look right. Plenty of times where you can use it, plenty of times where you won't. In fact, I have found that I have come to a point where I'm able to use most techniques on almost every miniature that I paint. Could I take the rider right here, or the uh, the cold one? Okay, there he is, his little rider. Right. Could I take, hey, yeah, he's going to have to be magnetized. Um, so could I take the rider here and could I airbrush him? I absolutely could. The question is, do I need to and will I get a better effect by airbrushing him than I would not? And again, once you get this thing and you practice it, go nuts with it, have a great time, airbrush a whole bunch of stuff. Once you've had it for about a month and you, you know, you've kind of gotten used to using it, don't use it for everything, guys. Use it for what it's meant for. Okay? All right. So next, we're going to get to thinning paints, and uh, we'll get to this guy. Good fun.